I want you to think for a minute about lice, <laughs> but from their perspective and history of mankind from lice. Now these are kind of nice creatures, but they are very much dependent on us. While we think we're this intelligent, higher-minded people, they look at us as simply a food source. They have a small life, they can't live without us, and so you have to start thinking that they're kind of dependent on us, and there are more of them than there are of us. So who is driving who? Think back to our primal ancestor many years ago, about six billion, million years ago, and in sub-Saharan Africa, all of the primates were infested with lice. There was too much. The lice had to get out. So they evolved their food source. That's us. They evolved us through Australopithecus. They got us Homo erectus. And Homo erectus was a man that started walking out of sub-Saharan Africa and bringing the world man and lice. We know where we started to kind of go wrong with lice. We got off on the wrong foot because we started losing our hair. So what did lice do? They evolved a different species that lives in clothes. Now the problem with that is the lice that live in clothes carry the disease. So it's not nice to kind of piss off the lice. And those diseases have been responsible for more problems in the world than any war. And we'll demonstrate that. The problem with lice, though, is when they are infected with those diseases, be it typhus or relapsing fever or trench fever, is they die. Their soldiers going to war with us die. So they sacrifice. Let's go through some of history. You know, the pharaohs, they took off all, I mean, look at them. They took off all their hair because of the lice. And so what did they get plagued with from the great louse or some other book that was written? A plague of lice. And it was a plague of lice that went through that. The plagues. Who can forget the plagues? We all think of them as horrible, and they were caused by rats and fleas and lice. The lice kind of look at it as pruning their food source out. <laughs> While we think that Christianity and the wars between the Catholics and the Protestants led to all of this war and destruction, what it did was it brought lice and typhus to every small hamlet and village throughout Europe. We think that we're in control. We're about as much in control as the honeybee is of the flower. Napoleon, those uppity French, they wear their wigs, they get rid of the lice, so what do we do? We get them to itch and go after Mother Russia and more people died from that, the lice, than anything else. The uppity Americans trying to clean themselves up. You make them itch, they go to war with one another and two thirds of the people who died didn't die from artillery, they didn't die from rifle, they died from disease. And then there was World War I where nitpicking became an art because of all of the people that were in the trenches, 97% of them were infected with it. More disease and trout came from trench fever than any artillery shell. You know, you get hit by a piece of shrapnel, you get a medal. You get bit by a louse that has trench fever, you don't get anything, you go home. So we tried to combat them. We always tried to combat them and DDT came. Now, you know, lice are pretty smart. Their generation is 20 days, ours is about 20 years, so they'll overcome that. But if you don't think in neural networks, as we just heard about, don't happen in creatures, think about this. The real reason that eagles have soft shells wasn't DDT. It was lice that infect eagles. And somehow, Rachel Carlson, Carson got it wrong and DDT isn't found anymore. That doesn't stop us. There are lots of things that we try to do to get rid of these little creatures. And the more we try and get rid of the ones on the head, the more we get the ones on the body, and the more we get resistance. If anybody has had kids that have had these, and I'm sure many of you have, these things are rather toxic, almost as toxic as the mercury and the arsenic we used to get rid of them before. But the lice will always be there. They will be with us, because what they'll do is the same thing they've always done. They'll make us itch, we'll get mad, we'll get upset. And wherever there is war and there is poverty, or wherever there are crowds, there will be lice that will find new targets. Kind of like here. <laughs> On behalf of the lice that infect 17%, make that now 40, 50% of you, thank you. <laughs>